our next series looks like it will between, like I said, uh, Harstam versus This Game Suck. This Game Suck is actually the winner's bracket player. Uh, Harstam actually had to come up through the loser's bracket, so Harstam will have, two, will have to win two best of threes if he wants to get the seeding advantage uh, this time around. Yeah, and um, I was just about to mention how it lagged out, but that's obviously not the case right now. So we're running smoothly li right here, and it's yet another PvZ. I personally do not mind, and uh, these players might, well, I mean, at least on one side, we've stepped up quite a bit in terms of, uh, you know, how famous the player is and how good he is at the game. I don't know how familiar you are with this game sucks, though, or is there anything we uh, we know about him? I do not actually know that much about him. I mean, Harstam's obviously a uh, well-known player, but this game sucked. Uh, he qualified before I... He did not qualify. He qualified earlier than I casted, basically, uh, for this league at this point in time. So I actually am not very familiar with his style at all. So, well, should be new to both of us, I think. Yeah, and uh, should, should we point out that whenever we say this game sucks, it's actually not our opinions, and it is entirely on his end, maybe, because, well, it, it's a funny only name. Is he one of those guys who always complains about how absolutely good Buru was and how bad StarCraft 2 is? I, I have a feeling, I have a hunch that might be the guy. But anyway, let me go ahead and introduce the first player. And speaking of who, it is, of course, this game sucks representing a... T, and he is the uh, teal or light bluish zerg in the top left. And in the bottom right, we have our pink Protoss player. Always fun to get alliteration out there. But representing Team Fnatic, one of the bigger teams in the esports scene, has been around forever. His name is Harston. Yeah, these two players, uh, well, specifically Harston, is going to switch a bit from what we've uh, seen previously. And he is going for the Forge Fast Expand. Yeah, it's going to be a different, certainly different starting style, and it's going to have a different pace at the start of the game, certainly. Uh, for Hearthstone, I mean, he's going to be as vulnerable to those all-ins as we saw. This map, maybe a bit more than others, is because it's just massive choke, but hopefully he walls this off as fast as possible. We'll likely go Forge first, just because on this map, it's a bit dangerous to go Nexus first uh, in this yeah. particular instance. I'm actually a bit surprised he's letting his probe just chillax here at the natural the entire duration between pile and the forge. Yeah, it is, it is a bit of a decent time. It's also it's a pretty long walk back to base, but so uh, he would just have to basically walk back down maybe anyway, but I mean he's also really cocked about getting this wall up as soon as possible just because of how massive this choke can be. But well, it looks like we might see that 15 pool um, in the hatch from this game suck, which is just very typical stuff so far. And, uh, yeah, so we'll have to see if this devolves into a bit more of a... I don't want to say... I guess I, I, I actually I do want to say standard. I mean, Forge Fast Expand, I mean, the Gateway Expand is going to be more popular, but the Forge Fast Expand is still what you would call the standard opening against their, for a Protoss player. So should be a bit more what you're used to seeing uh, right from the get-go here for, uh, for this match. Yeah, some pretty nasty hatchery blocking going down right there. Oh, actually, hatchery manages to land. Uh, oh, uh, it was a pause there for just a second, but we're casting off replay, so no problem with that at all. Next is finally going to be planted down. Actually, a bit late here from uh, here from Harshton, but I I'm sure he has his reasons. Maybe he is uh, playing another game at the exact same time. Who knows? Um, yeah, man. That's why he needs the pause. He's got. He's he has too much to worry about. Yeah, he had to BM his other opponent. That's why maybe. Yeah, yeah, I'm not really so sure about that. He is uh, he is good, but nah, he's not Korean level good. <laughs> uh, anyways, we're having, as you said, you know, the, the standard game slowly being developed. I'm not definitely sure how much of a fan I am of the standard game, what that now actually is defined as on this map. Uh, we're actually having the third being put down um, not very early on, actually. A very late third, if we consider. Actually, no. Forgive me, I am a bit off with the timing. It looks like a standard third versus, versus the Forge Fast Expand. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're probably not going to have very much happening for the beginning of the game. Yeah, no, not quite. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just take this opportunity while things develop a bit more to go ahead and once again suggest to everybody who's watching the stream, if you live in the Netherlands or close to it, please attend the live finals uh, in The Hague uh, on Saturday. It should be, oh god, massive pause. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of wall of text, but yeah. Attend the finals. Gonna be, there's going to be really nice production. Uh, good casters. It seems uh, Kylaris is going to stop by. Hopefully we can get him to guest cast some games as well. Uh, that would be really fun to watch. Big, player, big players, big names. Harston will be there. Rhett. Um, 
it should be a, just a lot of a tremendous amount of fun to watch. Uh, if you can't get there in person, be sure to check it out online as well. Um, we'll have a couple of our more regular casters stepping in and handling that as well. So it should be a great event. So definitely just drop by. It's free entry. You can. Uh, I'm not sure if you can still reserve seats or not. I'll have to check with uh, the guys who run the league really briefly. But it's free entry as far as I know. So definitely stop by. There's really no reason not to if you live close. Yeah, and I'm a bit surprised Kalaris actually could come here because you know, isn't he busy doing all those Game of Thrones episodes and being a model for all those <laughs> handsome pictures, you know? But yeah, you know, no, he decided. Yeah, I know, but he decided, you know, Dutch Rocket League is worth it, so he decided to come, and so should everybody else. Of course, there are those with, um, you know, a couple of issues to come. You have the Atlantic Ocean, I have the um, economical problems, but I can promise you, whoever decides to go actually will realize it's totally worth it. And now, some time has passed, and it's, it's sort of the time you need to wait for something to actually happen in this matchup when we see a Forge Fight expand. And it, it looks like we're going to have some poking. The warp gate is actually being chrono boosted, and I find that it's it's a bit odd to see it being chrono boosted, considering that we have, oh, well, I mean, the, the gateways, I don't feel they're properly timed with it, but we're definitely going to have some foregate pressure coming down here anyway. Yeah, a little foregate pressure, and looks like plus one will be nearly done, if not done as well, so... Will potentially do some damage here. Will this Overlord, this Overlord's moving in, and it will scout out two and three gates in the main, so... Well, this game sucks, should know what's coming, and well, he has adequate production to really prepare for this. The Roach Warren about to finish as well, so I think... Well, he just lo lose that Overlord, so that kind of is, uh, is a bit annoying, but... More Overlords on the way. Won't be able to turn out those Roaches immediately, but they'll be on the way here pretty soon. Robotics Facility dropping down for Harstam as well, so we'll have that follow-up too, after this pressure. Yeah, and you know, behind this whole pressure we're seeing, the Robotics being taken every single gas, so he's definitely preparing well for any type of follow-up. Only, oh, there we go, the second, uh, third and fourth uh, Zealot being warped in as well. And right now, the uh, the eight roaches destined to stop this are not really done, you know, producing yet. Yeah, I might actually get a chance to pick a couple of them off when they spawn here as well. The drone's forced to pull off for a bit, and, well, let's see what else Arsene can do done with this. And he's basically just trying to deal as much damage as he can, and... Maybe going to have to consider a recall here as well, as this Mothership Core is taking a fair bit of damage from that Queen, and you really do want to save this Mothership Core. Actually, the Queen yeah. actually will get picked off, and, well, he might go back and try to maybe brew some more drones, picking off a couple wounded ones, and he's doing some decent damage so far. We have six workers killed at this point in time. The Zelts look like they will get cleaned up, and the Mothership Core going to hang around a little bit longer. Not a whole lot to deal with at this point in time until now the Queen makes his way down here, so it could just be a bit of an obnoxious bother for a while here at this third base. Yeah, I mean, we see quite a bunch of worker kills, a total of nine going down here from Harshtum, and maybe even a couple of more as actually now the Queen comes and the Mothership Core has to fly away slowly. And the Sentry Immortal follow-up to this build is going to be very, very strong, I feel. I mean, mm -hmm. if you manage to get that upper hand with the Forgate Pressure, then, you know, the follow-up is just going to absolutely kill you, and I'm not really sure how you can prepare for this specifically. Looks like the uh, proxy panels are actually going to go down, so we're going to have to rely on a war prism entirely here once that third immortal pops out. And Harstam, um, he doesn't have the convenience of proxy panels necessarily, but I feel that he is in a very good position right now. Yeah, he's still just continuing to like annoy these roaches with this mothership core, just being a complete pain in the ass here. But we do have that army moving across the map, and three immortals and sentry count is up to eight. It looks like so should be should be enough to deal with these zerglings with the good force fields. Obviously, uh, there are fair middlings on the field. Five, uh, five more roaches being made, and but I mean this game suck is a little bit supply blocked right now. Forced to add on five overlords, and that's not really what you want to see. Roach speed won't be done. Plus one will not be done either. Hydrogen's on the way, that helps against the Immortals and Sentries a fair bit, but they're also pretty expensive to pump out, but... Well, let's see how soon Harshman decides to push in here, it should be pretty soon, Pylon's on the way, and uh, let's see how effective his attack can be. Yeah, I have a hard time imagining, actually we do see a couple of more Hydras, but it's still only five Hydralisks, and the supply almost tells the entire tale, you need a larger supply advantage as Zerg in this position, and in this position, Harshman can just absolutely demolish his opponent with some good force fields. Mm -hmm. He could wall off each side, and this third base actually gonna go down. Oh, no, it looks like Arsham is backing off. Force fields start, will start going down. Not a ton quite yet, but also the, like, there's really just not that many units here for Zerg, to be honest. I mean, his army supply is 51 right now, and that third base does go down, and that's a lot of the production that you really need to kind of throw units at this push and just try and stop it, because that's you can't really do much else against force fields, unfortunately. Nice force fields there, catching a lot of roots behind it, and there's the GG out from this game suck, and yeah, like you were saying, after being pretty successful with the 4-gate pressure, this follow-up, 
He basically felt he did enough damage. He's like, all right, well, this follow-up is going to definitely kill this guy. I don't have to worry about expanding. I'm just going to attack, be comp confident in doing it, and, well, he pulled it off, and here we are with Harsh with a 